Good evening and welcome to the Channel Studios here in London for your international news around the world in five. China has closed schools in Beijing after restricting air travel from the capital to prevent a second wave of coronavirus infections. Beijing reported another 31 cases on Wednesday, bringing the total to 137 in the past week. Before the recent spike, the city had gone 57 days without a locally transmitted case. At least 27 neighbourhoods have been classed as medium or high-risk areas, and no one neighbourhood near the market where the outbreak supposedly started has been labelled as high-risk. While the fears in China are about a second wave of infections after largely bringing its outbreak under control, countries in Latin America are still struggling to cope with the first wave. Brazil, the country with the second highest number of infections after the US, has reported its highest daily jump in cases, while Peru's death toll has surged past 7,000. It should never have happened. Meanwhile, New Zealand Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern has said the two new coronavirus cases in New Zealand are an unacceptable failure to the system and the Defence Force will now oversee the country's quarantine facilities and strengthen border requirements. China has said it wants to avoid further clashes with India along the Himalayan border after the first deadly confrontation between the two nuclear powers in decades killed at least 20 Indian soldiers. The Chinese foreign ministry reiterated that China is not to be blamed for Monday's clash and said the overall situation at the border is still stable and controllable. According to Indian officials, no shots were fired, but soldiers were hit with clubs and stones during a confrontation that erupted between the two sides along the border. Meanwhile, the South Korean unification minister has offered his resignation over the sharp rise in tensions with the North. The announcement comes a day after North Korea blew up a symbolic liaison office near the border, which was built to improve ties with the South. The North Korean army has also said it will send troops into disarmed areas along the border, Kim Yol-chul said he took responsibility for the worsening of inter-Korean relations. Lebanon's Hezbollah leader Syed Hassan Nasrallah has said big investment is needed to bring up the country's currency and accused the United States of preventing money from reaching the country. A drop in Lebanon's currency last week sparked fresh protests in Lebanon, prompting the government to announce that the central bank would begin injecting dollars into the market this week to reverse its fall. In a televised address, Nasrallah said the United States has blocked dollars from reaching Lebanon and has worsened the situation. Meanwhile, Syria has devalued its currency that hit a record low after the US announced it will implement new sanctions aimed at cutting off revenue for President Bashar al-Assad's government. The US hopes the sanctions will push Assad back into United Nations-led negotiations and settle an end to the country's nearly decade-long war. Russia and China have criticized the US plan to impose further unilateral sanctions and said the purpose of these measures was to overthrow the legitimate authorities in Syria. Residents of the Brazilian city of Sao Paulo have taken to the streets to protest about the death of a 15-year-old boy who was allegedly killed by police. <laughs> Gilhem Silva Guides went missing on Sunday. His body was later found with two gunshot wounds to the head and signs of aggression on his body. Sao Paulo's civil police have confirmed two officers from the military police are being treated as suspects. Protesters have set fire to vehicles in anger over the death. In Uganda, the presidential hopeful pop star and lawmaker Robert Kyagulanyi, most commonly known as Bobby Wine, has announced an alliance with the veteran opposition leader Kiza Besigye. The substance of the agreement remains unclear, including whether the two opposition parties will field joint candidates. Uganda will hold a presidential election between the 10th of January and the 8th of February in 2021 and will introduce restrictions aimed at slowing the spread of COVID-19. Facebook boss Mark Zuckerberg has said users will be able to turn off political adverts on the social network in the run-up to the 2020 US elections. Facebook has faced heavy criticism for allowing adverts from politicians that contain false information. The company has said it plans to make the new feature available to all US users over the next few weeks and will offer it in other countries this autumn. And finally, television series, movies and documentaries about the experience of black people in the United States have seen a huge surge in viewership amid anti-racism demonstrations since the death of George Floyd. 
Ava DuVernay's documentary 13th about mass incarceration that disproportionately affects black people in the US has seen its audience surge by 4,665% over the past three weeks. That's according to data by the streaming service Netflix. And that's your international news around the world in five. Now back to the Channel Studios in Lagos.